everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews. Today is the final day of our Esplanade bra tutorial. So let's get this bra finished up. Now we can start putting our cups into the frame that we prepared earlier. So remember, like I said, these smaller triangle here, that's going to be what's closest to the sternum and the larger triangle is going to be what's closest to the outside. Now, when you're doing this, you definitely, because we've already finished the top band of the cup or of the frame, you want to make sure that you're starting right at this, at the very top here and that your cup extends all the way to the very edge here. So the foam is a little stretchy as is this fabric. So if I run into any issues and I need to stretch it out, I can just just stretch it a little bit, or you might need to ease it into that curve. But it's very important that they start and end at the same right place because there's no way for us to fix it because both this edge and this edge are already finished. So I'm gonna start pinning at my center front. That's just a habit of mine and what I like. And I'm going to align my cup there. And then, because I want to make sure that it fits all the way around perfectly, I am going to pin myself at the very edge over here as well. Now the cup lining, or the, the cross cup seam here should align with the cross or the where the bridge meets the frame so we'll pin in that spot and then we should have a notch in our frame for where this cross seam meets and the same thing over here we should have a notch in our frame and that's where this cross seam meets so once I have all of those known points pinned into place, then I just sort of work with what's left over and pin it into place. Now I'm a big proponent of using lots of pins because I'm not doing this industrially. I'm not trying to be super, super fast. So it doesn't matter to me that it takes a little bit extra time. I just think pins are going to be the best way of me to get this cup in there as easily as possible and then I won't have to like redo my seams because I have gathers or something like that. And this cup is fitting in quite well. I didn't make any alterations to my frame or my cup, so I would expect them to fit in pretty perfectly. Orange lingerie patterns tend to be drafted well in that sense where everything matches as long as you don't make any changes to it. So now that I've gotten this cup pinned in, I'm going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to sew it with a straight stitch at a quarter of an inch. And lately I have been finding that it's a little bit easier for me to sew it from with the frame side up because that's where I tend to get most of my puckers because this is the fabric that's that was a curve like this and now it's being pushed into like a frowny face curve. So it was a smile and now it's a frowny face. So I like to keep my frame side up and that's the side that I'm gonna sew from at a quarter of an inch with a straight stitch. So this is what it looks like once it's sewn into place. And then you can see that we have it meeting sort of perfectly with the upper arm of the the bra meets the top of the cup there and it matches pretty perfectly at the bridge here so now I'm just going to go ahead and put the second cup into place in the same method and now we have both cups inserted into the bra and it's really starting to come together now so before we add our underwire channeling I am going to remove some of the bulk from my seam allowances particularly because of the foam cups these just get really big and cumbersome I can see here from the front that this bridge is going to be very narrow so I am going to have to overlap my underwire channeling in there so that's one thing to keep in mind so this is a 36b that I made up so uh, I think next time I will probably have to widen that bridge just because for me I tend to have two to three finger lengths in between my cups so yes First, I am going to trim out a lot of this bulk. I primarily want to focus on the foam, getting rid of as much of that foam as I can. 
because that's going to be what's really thick under that underwire channeling. Okay. So now I got those as trim in and small as possible. I'm going to pick up my underwire channeling. Now normally if you've watched some of my other tutorials, you know that I generally put the channeling in before I do any of the elastics right here. But this time it is one of the last steps in the bra. So when we're putting in the underwire channeling, we can extend all the way from the bridge all the way to the underarm side. We don't have to leave any open because there's no, there's no elastics that we need to account for later. So what I'm going to do is fold the bra like so. So I have both the cup and the frame on my left hand side. So I'm only looking at the seam allowance here. And I'm going to align my underwire channeling with the stitching line that where the cup is attached to the frame. And I'm going to sew as close as I can to that stitching line to attach my underwire channeling. Now at this point, I'm still only sewing through the seam allowance. So you shouldn't be able to see any stitches from the right side of the bra because you're only dealing in this area and you're not touching this. Okay, so here's what it looks like once that underwire channeling is put into place. Remember, it's just in the seam allowances, so you can't see it yet from the front side of the bra. I've also gone ahead and closed off these two edges in the center front, and I've just done that with like a repeated zigzag back and forth just to make sure that the wire won't come poking out of there later. So now I am going to top stitch these down. I still like to do the the attaching the channel to the seam allowance and then top stitching down because I think it gives us the best placement. So just like we had to do on the bottom band here, remember that what's on the bobbin of your machine is what's going to be showing from the outside of the bra. So I'm gonna be putting a white thread in my top and then a green thread in my bobbin. And I'm going to be top stitching the channeling in place and I'm going to go as close as I can to the outer edge of the channeling here using a straight stitch. Now, while you're doing this, I do recommend sort of giving a tug over here. You want to make sure that your fabric is taut and pulled away from the cup so that you're not getting any bunching in there. But just a straight stitch as close as you can to that edge all the way around. So as I had mentioned before, this isn't wide enough for me to get both of my channeling in there. So I am going to have to pivot. So what I'm going to do is just mark on my channeling. And this is a friction erasable pen, so it's something that I can get rid of later with just a little bit of heat. So I'm going to mark there. So when I'm sewing on my channeling, I'm going to come all the way to this point here. And I'm going to sink my needle, line up, and then make it so that I can pivot and just turn around here. So I'm not going to continue sewing up, up to the tippy top of the bra because then I won't be able to get my second wire in. So I'm gonna to come to that pivot point, sink my needle, and then continue along on the second side. So here we can see what it looks like from the front of the bra. And you can see at that pivot point and the channeling how it looks. So now we're going to stop top stitch from the right side of the bra. And this time we're gonna to want to go as close as we can to this seam where the cup attaches to the bra. And so I'm going to switch out my thread so that my bobbin is white and that my top thread is green. Okay, and now we have that second line of stitching in there. One last thing that we're gonna do just because this is an overlapped channeling is that I am gonna go in with a hand needle and just whip stitch these two together so that they're not um, you know, free floating the way they are currently. Uh, and that way it keeps it a little bit flatter and I find it a little bit more comfortable if I just hand stitch these two together flat down. So one of the last steps of our bra is to put our hook and wire, our hook and eyes in. So as you remember, I have a big long strip because I just bought a bunch of it. So we do need to measure and I will line this up here and it looks like we need to cut it right about here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven high. Now when you're cutting it, you do want to make sure that you get as close as you can in between these. One, two, three, four, five. Six. 
you don't want to air too much on one side or the other because then that row becomes unusable so because this is cut off at whatever length that we need it, it means that we're going to have to finish these ourselves. So I just use a satin stitch and I will sew along the top and the bottom of the eyes and the hooks. The hooks are a little bit different because we have to fold it and then attach it down. And these can be quite tricky to do if you have some issues getting your machine to do it in this narrow of a space. You can always just do a really tight whip stitch by hand um, and that might be a little bit easier on the hooks. So let me go and finish the edges of these two pieces. Okay, so we can see that I have finished off those edges here and here. I was able to use the machine on this, but it was close call. So now we want to, if we're looking at the right side of the bra, the correct side. So there is a pocket in here. And then we just want to slide our whole back piece into that pocket. So once you've, you've put your bra into the envelope of the eyes, you can go ahead and sew it in place. I'm going to use a straight stitch down this as close, close to this straight edge as I can, but you can also use a zigzag stitch if you prefer. And then once you sew it into place, it should look something like that. So now we're just going to fold our bra in half. Now we are looking at the inside of our bra. And we want to sew the hooks on so that the hooks face the inside of the bra. So at this point, I do find that it's a little bit easier for me to switch over to a different foot on my machine because this is so narrow of a space. So I'm just going to be using this sort of like classic standard zigzag foot in here because I find that gets me a little bit closer than using the sort of bigger and bulkier walking foot. I just wanted to sit here and show you an example. You can see how my, my hooks are up against the side of my presser foot here and then I do have my needle pushed all the way over so that it's making sure to capture both edges of the closure. So here's what it would look like once you have finished sewing that in from the inside and the outside. Now I'm not going to be using boning in my bra because I don't find that it's particularly helpful for my torso shape, but if you wanted to add boning, I would do it now. So you want to add boning in these seams here of the bridge and the side seams. And what I would suggest using is something like this, which is a cotton or polyester twill tape because it's going to be really, really strong. But this is what I like to use as my boning channels. And I would overlay them on top of the seams and then sew with a straight stitch as close as I could to either side of the boning channels. Now you have a couple options for boning as well. The pattern maker suggests ridgeline boning. So this is an example of a ridgeline boning. This is kind of cool because you can sew through it and it's really, really lightweight, but it's plastic. Um, you could also use zip ties if you have those floating around. Just a little bit of zip ties does help give structure into the side of the bra. This one is quite thick and not something I would necessarily recommend for this. Also, this ridgeline boning, as you can tell, is almost as wide as my twill tape. So it is quite tricky to get that in unless you are very, very accurate with your seam allowances. But the ridgeline boning does come in smaller widths as well. I have purchased several vintage bras which use spiral steel boning in them, uh, but I will say a note of caution that the spiral steel boning doesn't work very well with water, as you can imagine. It's steel and it is prone to rusting, so I am 
intend to wash my bras, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend spiral steel boning for this, but you could if you want. If you're gonna use spiral steel boning, I would say put it in in a way that allows you to take it out before you want to wash the bra. Now our very, very last step, of course, is to put in our underwires. So I'm gonna be using a 40 underwire. The size that I've made typically calls for a 36. However, I will caution that because of this style of bra, you're gonna need an an extra long wire. So one that is extended longer than normal. And because of that, I'm able to use a bigger wire in here than what is called for because I'm using a standard 40 instead of like an extra long 36. So all we need to do is look at our underwire channeling and it's a little tube. So you just need to make sure that you're getting in the middle of the tube and not between the underwire channeling and the fabric itself. You wanna go inside of that channeling and push it all the way to the inside. Now typically these wires are gonna be demarked by a little bit of color and that color is what should go in the center front portion. So that's what's gonna go into the channeling first. Now I always find this last little bit is the hardest to get in. But if you sort of wiggle in, you'll get there. And you should have what's called wire play. So you want about a quarter of an inch left over on this side and in the center front here. So we find our colored end, we put it into the tube. pushing it in until you get your wire play that you should have. And then the very last step is just that we're gonna to need to close this off with a, little, with a couple zigzags back and forth. And then our bra will be completed. That concludes the Estimated Bra tutorial. I hope you guys have found this information helpful. And if you've made a bra using my instruction, please make sure to tag me on Instagram at Liz underscores sews. I'll see you next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.